We're delighted to be here. Um, I'm the CEO, if you didn't hear that first part we're talking about. Um, and we are here really to uh, share some of what we've learned as an agency, um, working with quite a lot, a lot of young people, um, that hopefully is kind of useful for you in terms of you thinking about what you do and, and how you do it in your businesses. So um, um, I just thought I'd set the scene. Now, the screen is a bit difficult to... Um, to see. Um, but this is the age profile of iCrossing. We've got about 150 staff in the UK. There's about 900 of us globally. And as you can see, on the left are all the young people. Um, our youngest full-time person being 19, Grace, who is not here today. And then we've got a few in, in the 50 plus. But you can see the kind of curve of the age profile of our agency. And this hasn't really changed over um, five years or so. Um, and controversially, um, we have uh, divided it, if you can read the screen, into the, uh, the uh, young guns and the old dogs. And, and a lot of the time, this is talked about as the millennials. You know, we talk about the millennials and Gen X. So I'm a Gen Xer, um, and um, the millennials are on the left. Now, um, there is always a lot of research into generations. And um, if you see here, you can see um, that the millennials, um, the younger folk, um, in their working life tend to value more flat structures, work-life balance, and social conscience, having more of a social con conscience. Compared to people like me, I'm an exer, um, and I'm mostly associated with individual advancement, stability, and job satisfaction. So you've got different generations going after different things. Now, this is all very useful, but in fact, um, we have a lot of old dogs who are um, in their mindset young guns, and we have a lot of young guns who are also old dogs. So, I think all of these principles um, are very valuable and good things um, for people to hold on to. Um, and um, probably the place where the difference between young talent and old people is most obvious in eye crossing is over the music that gets played on the music systems, because they fight over that, because they like different music. But it's a, a lot more spread than this kind of um, um, representation shows. Um, and it is much more mindset. However, we are a business. Um, working in a very fast-moving area, and we have a lot of young people compared to me in the business, although some people might say I'm young. Very few these days. Anyway, um, what I want to do, what I'm going to try to do, if I can go back two slides, please, someone. Because uh, this won't take me back, I don't think. Uh, who's at the back there on the laptop? Do you mind just taking me back two slides? Oh, there we are. Thank you. Sorry. OK. So listen, we did um, ask staff in the agency, some of our young guns, what it is they look for in a job, not what they like about eye crossing, but what they look for when they think about their jobs and their careers. And so this is what they had to say. It's important at work. We are going to need sound for this. Do you want to, uh, can you, um, make an effort to organize you, things? For me, just coming in. Do you want to take it back to the beginning with a bit more sound so people can hear? Here we go, hopefully. It's important at work for me to feel comfortable. Um, and I think at iCrossing, I do feel comfortable. It's a pretty welcoming environment. Everyone kind of gets involved with social things outside of work and kind of makes an effort to organise things. For me, just coming into work and knowing that everything's set and organised and actually having a plan, not just for work, but as in for my career. I would say the most important thing to me at work be the team that I work with, um, making your own comfortable environment and then so you can exceed. The most important thing to me um, is being in a supportive environment, kind of learning new things day to day, um, giving the opportunities to kind of push my career forward. Um, so yeah. The thing that I love the most about iCrossing is the freedom that I'm given by my creative managers to innovate, to come up with new ideas, to come up with content ideas and push boundaries. And so what's important for me at work is to definitely feel that I've achieved something. Um, I think the most important thing is to be in a supporting environment, so being somewhere where your managers look after your work-life balance. 
Okay, so there's a lot of really great themes in there about um, what young people are looking for when, when they're out looking for a job. And, and I, I don't think a lot of them have to do with a lot of the stereotypes. I mean, millennials in particular um, get quite a hard time in the press. Um, some of you might be familiar with narcissism as a term that is associated with young talent and self-obsession. Um, um, you know, the generation brought up by parents like me who have encouraged them all their lives and told them how great they are rather than challenge them. I do not see that kind of negative stereotype of millennials um, in the young people we have in our, our agency. I think they're a very talented, very determined young group of people who have grown up in a very different world from the ones that um, the millennials have. Um, so we uh, describe ourselves as a marketing agency for the modern world. Now what that means is we're effectively a digital agency um, that tackles marketing problems by mixing up lots of different digital channels. Um, we've got a lot of young people who are directly involved in doing that and our, our, our mission is to unleash potential. And that potential is um, the potential of the brands that we work with and helping them to succeed in a modern world, um, but also the uh, potential of the people who are at Eye Crossing, um, who are mostly these young people. So we have quite an advanced um, people program um, that we're going to share with you, just to give you an insight into how we do that. But before we do that, um, it's just worth making a point that um, you know, we've built a reputation um, over about 15 years. Uh, Eye Crossing is a business that was... Um, born in Brighton. It was originally a company called Spannerworks. Um, and it's got an incredibly strong reputation in the market that, that I think we should all be proud of as a Sussex born and bred business. Um, we got bought by Hearst, the Hearst Corporation, which is a, a large US um, media and content um, um, corporation um, back in 2010. And you know, if you have a look at the uh, slides, you can see we've had a pretty good a um, few years. That's the last uh, seven years, if it's a bit too small um, for you guys to see. The top line is our revenue, so you've got a nice little growth going on there. And the bottom line is our margin. So we're, we're, we're a growing, successful agency. And across this time, um, we've seen our client satisfaction rise, which is great to see. So we're, we're operating in a complex space. We have a lot of people working with us. Um, and, um, you know, things are going pretty well. Um, However, for me, as the CEO, it's felt much more like this, honestly, because it kind of looks like there's this nice steady growth and you know, margins are running along and clients are, are happy. But actually, in such a fast-moving world of creative and tech, a lot of the time for, for business leaders, I don't know if, it, you know if it feels like this to any of you guys, but as a CEO, it, it certainly does to me. Um, but across that same period of time, um, we've seen this happen to our staff satisfaction. Um, and so don't forget how tilted this are to young people. So in this fast-moving, challenging world of digital marketing and communications, we're doing some stuff right. Um, this is kind of a high-level view of how we operate as a business. I'm not going to explain it to you um, because it doesn't matter and I could use up all our time talking about this and I'm very enthusiastic about it and it touches on a lot of different things. But the red bit around the outside is people and culture. People and culture, which is wrapped around everything that we do, is an incredibly important part of how we operate as a business. Um, and it's particularly important to young people, um, particularly important to young people. I think that's come through in some of the speakers earlier on. People and culture, how we feel about what we do and how we do it. Now, Louise is the owner and master of people and culture. And um, you know, that great staff satisfaction is mostly down to Louise and her team, some of whom are here at the back. Um, so Louise is going to kind of share a bit more about what are the actual things we're doing in the agency underneath all of that to get us to, to, to that good place. So over to you. Thank you very much. Um, so we gave this big uh, pink ring around the edge of what we do called people and culture a name, which I want to introduce you to. Can I have the... Thank you very much. And... We've called it Total People, um, and as part of Total People, what we have is four pillars that we try and address. The first being how we recruit, second being how we engage our staff, how we retain them, and actually how we reward them. There's an awful lot of stuff that I could talk to you about today, um, but I've picked out some of the highlights to share with you all. So, here we go. There we are. So, as I said, we've got four areas and this is how we group some of this activity. Can you all see what's written on those slides? Yes, okay, good, excellent. 
kept it in nice bright colours so we can actually share some of this. So we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about actually, first of all, uh, how we got to Total People. So again, it's our people strategy. It's an activity program for the whole of 2017 that actually forms different ways that we can keep our staff happy and motivated. Now, what you're looking at on the screen now is the results of our 2016 employee engagement survey. They're amazing. And we're really, really proud of them, which is why we wanted to share them with you. Um, we consistently get scores above 65%, um, which we're really, really proud of. But actually, the people strategy itself is built around the four pillars that you can see that are circled in pink. Now, these were our lowest scores. Still only 57.3 is a low score, but this helped us build the strategy. And actually, it's not really, I don't know why I'm calling it strategy. It's activity that people get involved with and they see happening um, and actually benefits them as part of their time at eye crossing. So the first point I want to talk about is actually how we, one of the points we do when it comes to recruiting. Um, some of you may have seen us at the jobs fair yesterday, uh, myself, the HR team, and a lot of iCrossers were there talking to guys who actually were either school leavers, were coming out of university, were looking for a change in career, were already working in an agency in Brighton and wanted to find out more about us. And actually that's a big part of us pushing the word out about iCrossing and making sure that when people are thinking about a career, they're thinking about digital marketing and actually they're putting us, putting us at the forefront of their minds. What we also do is actually spend quite a lot of time going into educational institutions and working with them. This particular slide is a group from Imperial College who actually Mark worked with uh, a couple of years ago on a project, um, a live brief that actually they responded to for us and actually formed part of their course. We've also got 14 students from City College coming in tomorrow to actually talk to us, find a bit more about us. They'll be meeting our chief media officer, a chap called Alistair Dent, myself, and they'll also be working with a lot of our creative team um, and finding out how they go about things like influence and marketing. So we're really committed to actually spending time with people who are learning about us and actually want to look, kind of explore career options um, in order to make sure that we can get the right people into the agency. Engage. There's quite a lot on this because we do quite a bit. Um, and this is one of the first things I wanted to talk about. We've always been committed as an agency to supporting charities, particularly local ones, both in Brighton and in London. Um, iCrossers get up to five volunteer days each year to do work for good causes, um, which people are really, really keen on. But we also do a lot of stuff en masse, which is what this slide is supposed to illustrate here. We were really lucky last year. We got the chance to sponsor Snow Dogs by the Sea, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Um, you would have seen very many brightly coloured snow, snow dogs around Brighton and Hove. This is ours. His name's Horatio, um, aptly named because it's where we chose him. <laughs> um, and actually, here's a group of iCrossers. We had a lot of events that we organised around Snow Dogs by the Sea, one of them being a pub crawl. So this is where this is our, uh, a lot of iCrossers in the good spirits. Uh, so it helps supporting that. We also try and do good together. Um, you may well have seen this in uh, the local news last year, but actually this is part of a Eye Crossing Cares initiative, which was actually global. Um, Eye Crossing was doing this around the world, um, but we wanted to do something that was specific to our community. Um, so we organised a Brighton beach clean and it was a game. <laughs> it was a challenge. Whoever could click collect the most rubbish wins the prize and actually it was brilliant because um, as you can see we're all in our blue t-shirts making sure that uh, people can see us doing a good you know making uh, supporting a really good cause here we go I'm standing too far away from that there we go and not forgetting the important part of having fun together. Um, you may be able to guess the theme of this particular night out the team had in Brighton. It was 80s bad taste. Uh, and this is them before they headed out onto the streets uh, to enjoy themselves. We try and make, n make as much time for this as we possibly can. Um, we have a sport and social fund which is available to employees um, where the, we fund um, contributions to any team sports they get invol involved with, but also social nights out, um, which has got a huge uptake. Um, and actually, I think we led was big push for this particular team event that they all went along to um, last year. Oh. No, maybe. Oh. There we go. I don't know. There we go, excellent. On to how we retain our staff. Now, there's two areas to this. Um, we came up uh, last year with a program that actually suits both needs of our team. So the first part is about core skills. 
core skills are the things that guys need to do in order to know how to do their jobs better, actually what forms part of their day to day. And actually the most significant bit of this this year so far has been getting, I think probably about 70 or 80% of the agency signed up to take the Google AdWords exams. Um, and we've done a lot, we've invested quite a lot of time in giving people the opportunity to study for the first one, which was a couple of weeks ago. And then they all sit in the exam together, not in a hall like this, I hate to add, um, but actually in our meeting rooms where they can support each other. And actually the overarching results we got out of that were above 90%. So they all did a fantastic job. Um, it's just an example of the, how we're supporting the core skills. And then... What we're trying to, what we also do is look at actually what a life skill is. So we recruit, and there's two examples on here. You've got Hannah on the left and James on the right, who joined us for six weeks back in January um, on placement from Brighton University. Um, and while they were with us, they got the chance to participate in something that we call Ideas Day. Um, Ideas Day is an internal program where we put teams together and they ask to respond to briefs that we've actually responded to on behalf of our clients. Um, they get a couple of days to prepare. It's a bit intense um, and a lot of people people haven't done it under that sort of time pressure before and then they present back to our senior team who some of whom may decide whether or not they want to play the role of tricky client um, but the idea is that it develops their presentation skills and it gives them the confidence when they're actually going out and talking to clients in real life situations and actually from our perspective it helps us identify who the great presenters are in the agency um, and actually when we come to do pitches and um, we can call on other people um, who wouldn't normally have otherwise been identified. And finally, reward. Now, there's a lot I could talk to you about here, but I wanted to use this slide because we run an internal program called the Excellence Awards, and we run this every six months. And the idea is that we celebrate the great work that our teams are doing. The slide you're looking at is taken from one of our town halls, meet, uh, one of our town hall meetings last year. Um, and this is our L'Oreal team winning the award for best search campaign. Um, the awards are judged um, by a panel that are put together. Um, and actually, they, we look at different categories depending on the work that we're doing. So it might be best creative, it might be best search. And actually, you've got Mark giving out the award on the right-hand uh, right side on the screen. We also try and do a lot to celebrate the actual... Um, knowledge that our people have. So we've got a lot of experts across iCrossing, and they're not necessarily running the agency. They come, in, they come in all shapes and sizes in all different departments. And actually, one of the things we do is we share a lot of thought leadership um, bits on our website. And this is actually our one article from our paid social strategist, James Mortimer, who's commenting on the monetizing of the messenger, uh, messenger app on Facebook. Um, We've, we've really tried to push um, the people who we've got who are outstanding in their field to actually talk publicly about the work that they're doing and share their, share their insights. And because actually, for, from an agency perspective, it really, really helps us raise our profile, but also it's fantastic for them. So I wanted to just highlight <laughs> some of the scores that we got in our amazing engagement survey results last year, which I think actually demonstrate how people feel about iCrossing. 81% of us love working for iCrossing. 86% believe their job is good for their personal growth. 88% feel free to voice their opinions to their line managers. And 83% agree iCrossing is run on strong values and principles. I cannot stress how proud we are of these results. And we're running another survey in April, and I'm very, mu I'm very much hoping that this is a consistent theme from when we did this last October. So... What we also thought we'd do to close on is actually ask the guys to share with you what they love about iCrossing. So we're going to close the video and then myself and Mark will take a few questions. I love the people. Um, everyone's just fun and friendly and you're never on your own. If you are panicking and need help, there's always a load of people that are happy to get on board and look after you. I love the fact that the people are great, the clients are great, uh, the officers are great. It's just a really good environment to work in. My colleagues, no, love them. Um, I think there is like a really great environment that I'm crossing yeah. and I really enjoy um, being a part of like the team, I'm crossing team. I really love the people. I think that there's a, uh, at iCrossing, there's a culture of like very friendly, supportive people. Everyone's here to help each other out. Um, so I like the chance to be able to work with uh, a lot of friendly people, work in a team environment, and have some responsibility in my own. 
Uh, I think working at iCrossing, um, I'm kind of surrounded by people, talking to people every day. Um, it's really important to be surrounded by people not, not only that you like, um, but they're there to help you and guide you, um, which has been really important um, from when I've joined to now. What I love about iCrossing, I think everyone's really passionate and knowledgeable about their work and I think that makes it really exciting. <laughs> So there we go, guys. Um, I, I hope that was useful. We, we, we've tried to give you a little bit of insight into um, how we run um, and plan the people and culture at the agency. And, and I hope that we've, we've shown today um, that some of it is working really well. Um, it's easy to run a business just on numbers, but the truth is um, the numbers are run by people and, and how people feel about the business they work in. It's more important than anything else. And um, you know, we've got a lot of young talent, so what we do has got to work for young talent. But for me, actually, more importantly, are um, people who stand for a kind of common and shared set, set of values and behaviours that we can all um, embrace together that defines who we are, regardless of whether you know, you're Grace, who's 19, um, or me, who's, you know, late 40s, um, and build that very kind of strong culture in a way that young people can feel part of it rather than something outside it. So, um, yeah, right, questions, I guess. Yeah, any questions from anyone, from Mark or Louise? No? Okay. I just wonder whether or not um, uh, how you're managing attrition, because we heard earlier about a different generation having a different attitude towards longevity and careers and needing, um, you know, what we might see as employers or people from a different generation as people who've hopped a lot in their career. Um, how you, you, you talked about the um, how you've been able to embed culture, but I'm wondering how you manage attrition and what the average duration is of somebody's term with you. So um, I'll kick off on that and, get, and then hand over to you because there'll be different different points of view on this um, from me as a CEO versus HR. Um, churn um, is a huge challenge for the advertising and marketing industry um, at the moment, um, and that's not just um, the work-life balance and the change in emphasis between um, Gen X and Millennials, um, but a recent IPA um, survey um, of all of their um, agency members have an average churn rate of about 30%. Now, that's a very high churn rate, you might say. Certainly, it would have been 10 years ago, where you might have thought it might be more like 10, 15. Um, but it's trying to get very high, and it comes up again and again and again and becomes an operational problem for, for I think, every business who has a lot of young people within it. We have lots of people all the time um, going off to Australia or, or going traveling or taking career breaks, and we support that a lot. Um, it is a big operational challenge. Um, also, as a market leader in um, Brighton, um, you know, there's lots of agencies who will look for iCrossers to come and join them and try to pull them out of our business, um, which is a slightly different problem, but all part of the churn challenge. The only antidote to that, or the only challenge to that, can be making people want to love where they are. They've got to love where they are, and they've got to want to stay, and they've got to see a future and a career. Um, but also, operationally, um, I think businesses need to recognize that you know, 20, 30% churn of staff is potentially a new norm, and it's not something that you, you, you're you going to change, but you've got to think about and embrace in terms of how you gear your communications and your training and your business um, and your approach to young talent um, to, to kind of eke out the best value from them as well as to give them a great start in their career. I mean, I'm a great believer that um, for all of us, and particularly the digital and creative industries, um, people... Um, or travel much further than a single job. Um, and particularly in a um, smaller talent market um, like Brighton and Sussex, um, you're going to see people come and go. We have a lot of people who boom around, so they'll leave and try some new stuff, and then they'll come back to us. Um, and, and that's part of making them love, love the business they're in and value it and want to be part of it. Um, but, you know, the grass is always greener. There's the siren call of going to Australia for a couple of years and all the other exciting things young people could do. Do you want to... Uh, have you got... Um, in terms of actually how we manage it and how we try and take it on, for me, it's been about actually trying to listen 
all the time to what people are telling you about what they're looking for, what they're what they're looking for in their job, why they like eye crossing, um, if somebody's leaving to go somewhere else, why are they going there? Looking at things like the exit interview data, running the survey. That's why we do our survey every six months, so that actually we're constantly staying on top of this stuff, because actually when we've been trying. Over the whole of last year, it's very easy for the people who are running the agency to get very caught up in what they're doing, i.e. the pitching, the managing the clients, the making sure we're doing the best creative work. All very, very important things, but actually it's very easy to, not, to, to start not paying attention to what people are trying to tell you and trying to tell their managers, um, which, is why we've, which is actually why this presentation is geared in the way it is, to show that we're trying to listen to people to make sure that we're getting ahead of the game. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's kind of like recognizing a new norm. And I mean, certainly um, among my peers, um, a lot of the time, we will tend to have um, five, six, seven year slugs at different businesses in our career. And, um, you know, um, if I am acting as type, I look for that in people's CVs because I want to see someone spending a year or two in a business really getting under the skin of it, a couple of years really adding value to it, and then, you know, potentially moving on after that, four, five, six years down their career. Um, these days, um, particularly in kind of mid and junior roles, um, I don't see that behavior. I don't see it so much in CVs, and I don't see it in behavior um, of, of staff. So you start needing to think about, well, are we working with a two-year arc? And even though um, people love being here, there's actually a two-year arc for very young people, um, and, and you know, it varies. So, But it is an operational issue, I think. For example, where do you put the... Um, you know, we invest a huge amount of our overall revenue into people and culture, um, so where do you put that? Do you decide that you put it into um, people who have earned their spurs and have been in your business for two years, um, or do you, you know, front load it? Exactly. So you know, and these are all challenges for for the modern world we we, we operate in. Okay. Can we have a round of applause for Mark and Louise?